two videos in the same day? Hey, why not? I'm in the mood, so let's get going. Um, first thing I'm going to do, though, I'm going to take uh, Lapras off the lead and give it to Lugia instead. I don't know why I was thinking that uh, somehow Ice resisted Grass. I had a brain fart there. I was probably thinking of another matchup. Maybe Grass versus Flying, but... Why was I thinking of Grass vs. Flying then? That's that's another thing that can't really be explained. But then again, I'm busy commentating, so sometimes brain farts like that are going to happen. That and, uh... Um, what was I about to say? I don't even remember! Oh, wow. I'm just gonna stop here before I humiliate myself even further and move on to something else. Uh, a few videos ago I mentioned that I had a story to share about how Sabrina could be so dumb sometimes. And uh, it basically goes back to a few days, uh, a few weeks ago rather, uh, on the TSG Presents stream. Uh, there were a few games being, being showcased at that time, one being Pokemon Yellow, and uh, it, it was Britt playing the game, and he got to Sabrina, and uh, in Yellow, she has an Abra, a Kadabra, and an Alakazam, all three at level 50. Well, he managed to sweep Sabrina at with a Nido King at level 40. I am dead serious. And by the way, this is the same playthrough where I talked earlier about how level 10 Charizard managed to take down that level Level 10 Charizard, level 10 Charmander. Sorry about that. I'm I'm so used to a knocking Charizard that uh, everything's Charizard now. But yeah, level 10 Charizard taking down that level 28 Raikou. Well, that level 40 Nido King managed to sweep um, Sabrina's team because she was using like Psy Wave all the time and crap like that instead of actually attacking for super effective damage, and, and 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 then everyone was like, well, let's see how that Nido King does against Blue's Alakazam, because he's not going to be as merciful. And Brit was all like, oh, challenge accepted, and he, 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 he kept saying uh, that he would eventually be ma manage to beat uh, Blue's Alakazam with his, uh, with his Nido King, which uh, is of course not an easy task because first he's got to outspeed and he's got to survive the sidekick, uh, which no one thinks he's actually going to do it, so everyone keeps egging him on about that, and uh, yeah, uh, for the last few weeks, uh, TSG Presents has been on uh, a hiatus for uh, personal reasons, but uh, we all know the real reason. He's secretly grinding the Nido King. Okay, maybe not. Maybe he's actually being serious. In fact, he probably is, but I just had to make that joke. Uh, anyway, I guess now all the underlings have been beaten, so only Erica is left. So uh, that means I'm going to be taking on uh, my third gym in five videos. Things are going to are going really, really fast right now, but uh, it's going to slow down a lot since, well, those three gyms were very close together. There's Cerulean that's close as well, but I'm not planning on heading to Cerulean next in the first place, and even there, there are a few things to do before I can actually take on the gym. So, um, Erica's basically telling us the story of her life, but yeah, I shall not lose. Uh, good luck on that, because, uh, She's got a lot of poison types in her team, which are very, very weak to, uh, to a psychic. And for whatever's not, there's still Arrow Blast and Ice Beam, so Luigi has a huge advantage here. Jump Bluff means Ice Beam. Oh, U-Turn right off the bat! And it's neutral, thanks to the flying type canceling out the psychic type's weakness. And in goes Tangela to take the Ice Beam. I don't think anyone on her team would like to take that, but... Tangela is probably the most frail in her entire team. Well, Jump Bluff isn't uh, very sturdy either, though uh, most people will usually run a very defensive spread since it can't attack worth peanuts. So, Victory Bell. I'm going to go with Psychic. No sense in uh, going with Aeroblast since um, 
Bell Awesome is not weak to Psychic. There we go. Psychic was enough to take down the Victory Bell. I wonder if Extra Sensory would have killed. It's something that I'm going to be thinking a lot since... Well, actually, no one scolded me for taking that decision and switching, but uh, still. Bell Awesome means it's Aeroblast time! So, um... Is it going to survive? Probably not, though... Um, because Victory Bell didn't survive the Psychic. And wow! Bell Awesome hung on with a third of its HP left. And here's the Citrus Berry on top of that. And Sunny Day. Okay, so now... Oh, yeah, that's right. Chlorophyll is going to be activated. So it's going to be able to attack first with Giga Drain for not too much damage, I imagine. 14 damage. Okay, so is Aeroblast going to be enough to take it down? Because the first one did two-thirds, and that's about what Bellasome has left. And it's enough for the kill! So, the only one that's left is the Jump Bluff from all the way back at the beginning. Uh, so for this one, I'm going to go with the Lapras, because... I don't think there is any major threat in taking a grass move to the face, because as I said, Jump Bluff's offensive stats are absolutely horrible! So, let's see uh, whatever it's gonna do. Giga Drain it outspeeds, no surprise there between uh, Jump Bluff's a very high speed right off the bat and Chlorophyll. Uh, I had no chance, but here we go. Ice Beam is probably gonna kill. Um, one of the reasons why I guess I'm using Lapras beyond the, the, the experience aspect is that I'm getting a bit paranoid after what happened with Lance's Dragon height, and <laughs> let's just say I don't want to experience that again, even though it's just a jump bluff and not a Dragonite. So, Rainbow Badge, which means we already have three of Kanto's eight badges. Now, as I said, the pace is going to be a lot slower from here on in. Yeah, my next destination is going to be Lavender Town. Oh, TM19 is a special token. Yeah, it's Giga Drain. That was uh, before it got upgraded to 75 power, but after it got upgraded to 10 PP. So, I don't have any plans for it, and it's sort of a shame that it's no longer a TM. Though I guess having Giga Drain be a TM with the 75 power it has now would be a little broken, I guess. So, uh, let's try and get out of here and not get lost on the way out, because that would be sad. Okay, oh, come on. Uh, as I said before, the camera angle sort of makes it tough to figure out uh, ex exactly on which square uh, you can go through these things. God damn, this is annoying! Okay, I, I got it. I think I got it. But God, I'm getting lost on the way out of the gym. As I said, memories of the Veilstone gym come uh, rushing back to me, I guess. So next destination, as I said, is Lavender Town, and there's a Route 8 that I gotta take care of. Okay, what does Hiker Anthony want? How are you? Come on, let's battle right now. No, I don't feel like fighting you right now. As I said, I'm moving on to Route 8, and I'm not going to be uh, picking up Crobat in the PC because, as I remember on Route 8, there's a place that you can only access with cut, so... Yeah, it, yeah it's no biggie, and uh, I'm gonna go through... I'm gonna go back to uh, Saffron by bike because it would be faster to do that than uh, to withdraw Crobat then fly to Saffron, and then, you know, deposit Crobat again. See, I'm already at Saffron, though I guess I'm gonna uh, drop by the Pokemon Center to heal off any damage to HP and PP that I might have had, as well as send Lapras back in the lead. Uh, once again, for experience considerations, I'm trying to, uh, as usual, level up my team together so that nothing would be too far ahead. Well, I know Tyranitar is already far ahead. You don't need to tell me that. And that's why I'm trying my best to not use it until everything else reaches level 55 as well. So, Route 8 is east of Saffron City. And uh, 
this is the first place where we're really, really going to see... Okay, by the way, this is the same underground passage as we saw in Route 7 near Celadon, where it was closed down by the police. Uh, anyway, as I was saying, Route 8 is really the first place in this LP where we're really going to see that compared to Gold, Silver, Crystal, Kanto has been done a lot better. The routes haven't been shrunk by a crazy amount, and on top and on top of that, there is now a respectable amount of trainers. I remember once giving the example that uh, in the path between uh, Lavender and um, Fuchsia, routes 12, 13, 14, and 15, there's actually one more trainer in Hard Gold, Soul Silver than in Red, Blue, and Yellow. I am not making that up. Go count it for yourselves if you uh, if you want proof. And by the way, seems like giving Lapra Psychic was the right decision because, as far as I know, Psychic is the only weakness Coughing has. So, yeah, I actually lucked out there. Uh, by the way, something I wanted to mention, something that uh, one of you guys told me about, and I went and checked it on Smogon to make sure it was true, and it actually is. Prove that Blaziken should not come back in uh, overused for a long, long time. It can actually take down a Giratina. A Giratina! The overall bulkiest Pokemon in the game! It can two-hit KO that thing with Sun Up and a Swords Dance boost, which will happen more often than not in Ubers if you're using the combination of Groudon and Blaziken. Now a lot of you are going to say the age-old argument that performance in Ubers should not be the criteria that determines whether a Pokémon should be overused or not, and I agree with that. However, as a rule of thumb, something that possesses the brute force to tear through a Giratina like that with not very effective moves, that should be a pretty, in a pretty good indicator that it would be able to chew just about anything up with ease among the Pokémon that are allowed in overused. And, uh, by the way, about, about what I was saying about um, how performance in Ubers doesn't really matter, I see a lot of people when I say uh, something might be banned, so, so, such as Espeon, for example, they always say, oh, but, if you, but it would get murdered in Ubers. It, it's obviously not the place for it. It should stay in overused. And it's something that it seems a lot of people have trouble with that concept, you know. Because, for, for example, last gen, before uh, Gastrodon Storm Drain was buffed, uh, Quagsire was really popular for uh, shutting down Kyogre. But in overused and even in underused, it was pretty, pretty useless for the most part. So no one used it there, but in Ubers it actually worked really well. Does that mean it should be Uber? No. Likewise, if Espeon turns out to be too good for overused, then it should be banned no matter how crappy it may turn out to be in Ubers. After all, when was the last time you saw something like a Manaphy or a Ruby Sapphire Deoxys in Ubers? Quite a long while, as far as most people are concerned. Okay, so then now that that's done and over with, there's an item right here, so let's take a look at what it is. TM41 Torment. Bleh, don't really care. If I remember, right around this corner is the area where we need Cut to go through, and it doesn't look like there's anything there, and I can't be asked to check, so I guess I'm going to keep the rest of Route 8 for next time.